so this is funny. I was just about to talk about this, and as I was looking for the relevant photos, my daughter called me, and she, <laughs> she called me because she wanted advice about um, something to do with her hair. Okay, right as I was looking for this directory, my daughter called me and asked me about something to do with her hair. This is another Trinidad James song, but it's a very, it's almost like a wisp of a song. It's only one minute and seven seconds long altogether. It's called Every Girl. Here is, I just act arbitrarily freezed it on this frame and look at what I see. I see, you know, it says T-R-I, but the R is sort of faded out on his shoulder. So it looks like T-I. And there he is flipping you off behind his back, or possibly pointing to his hair. So what's this about? Actually, no, he's not flipping you off. He's That's not the middle finger. That's the pointer finger. He is pointing to his hair. That's exactly what he's doing, or his shoulder, or both. So this photo on the left, um, a few months ago, my daughter... Um, I don't know how I ended up with this. These photos, I think, I think some it was something to do with you know old housekeeping stuff with my my daughter and um, digital photos she had somewhere, and I ran into this photo that she had taken of herself, which she titled "My Awesome Hair," and she had taken her hair and dyed the ends of it, or not dyed, but ble we had bleached the ends of it. She was thinking about coloring them. I think she colored them. I can't remember if it was purple or something like that. You know, sort of like that. According to the info on this, it was taken on or um, created on September 7th, 2010. That sounds about right. So she was, let's see, she was born in December of 95. So she was about to turn 15. She was 14. My daughter's 14 here. Now what happened, here's the story of what happened with this. She knew her dad was against her cutting her hair. Her dad was against her doing any kind of coloring to her hair, any of that stuff, but she wanted to experiment a little bit. So her idea, because her hair is so long, her, you know, she would just see her dad. Her dad lives in California. She would see him on school vacations and in the summertime. Her plan was to just dye the very ends of her hair a different color for fun and then to cut it off before she went to see her dad. And that's what she did. There's no way that her dad would have known that she had cut her hair, except he did know somehow, and he got very angry. He got so angry that he came up and had a, gave us a talking to about it. So, um, interesting. How did he know? And then there's this photo. This edition of the Portland Mercury, let's see, it's January 2014. I don't know exactly what part of Jan January it came out. Um, this was out when I discovered the surveillance. Okay, it came out right after I discovered the surveillance. Okay, so look at what the article is. Radical Girls, Strike, Fight, and Riot. A story of Portland's early feminists. Okay, and then there she is, uh, flipping you off with her right hand behind or pointing to her left arm with her middle finger, her right middle finger. It's page nine. She's got this, you know, G-string on and her pants hanging down and stuff. And um, I immediately recognize this as being, you know, the G-string has this, cat print on it and everything, which is coded. You know, people who talk about MK Ultra talk about the sex kitten coding and all of this stuff, but really, I think that the cat prints represent us because they call us cats. And yes, they did try to turn me into some kind of, you know, I mean, what else would you do if you had a hidden camera in a girl's bedroom? Try to make her have sex and behave sexually or whatever. I mean, you know, this wasn't, it's not any big secret what this was about. Um, her hair, you know, looked like my hair 
at the still, but you know, at the time and still basically, I just, I under, I, I, I identified this as being symbolic of what, um, what I was going through at that point. So, um, I think I may have even mentioned this to the police when I tried to report it, you know, um, didn't get me very far, but I, at the time I didn't even, I had never even seen this picture of my daughter at that time. So there's my awesome hair, my daughter, there's this, which I identified as being a sign of surveillance happening again, not even realizing that this picture of my daughter existed. And then there's Trinidad James coming out. Uh, this is pretty recent. But there's more with this Trinidad James, okay? There's more going on in this video than just the hair. This is just the beginning of the video. This is a picture of my daughter and me taken probably um, January 2018, right before she went to do an internship in Washington, D.C., uh, this building and stuff, I think, is kind of evoked in this video as well, this backdrop. Um, and I think partly what this video is showing is the separation that they've done with my daughter and me, because they've put me into this hole deeper and deeper, as deeper as they can get me down without uh, me being on the street homeless. Um... I've not been able to actually, you know, provide for her like a parent should be able to provide for their child. I haven't been able to provide a space for her to, you know, hang out and stay. And I mean, this has gone on five years now. I've basically been separated from my daughter more than I should be for the past five years. You know, she's at the age where um, it's still helpful to her for her to have parents. I mean, I think the whole life it is good to, you know, if you can be close to your family. I wasn't raised that way. I was. I was raised, but I could still be around my parents. My parents still had a place where I could go, you know, whether I, you know, whether I wanted to might've been another factor, but I can't, I'm being separated from my daughter on purpose because that's what they, another thing they do. They sexually molest children. They put hidden cameras around. I mean, these are patterns of behavior of this group that's behind all of this. And they um, separate children from their parents because it makes it easier to traumatize and control them that way. So, you know, when I say Kim Gordon could tell the truth and get a lot of mileage, you know, help me out a lot by telling the truth, I mean, she could help not just me, but a lot of people. You know, all these kids that are being molested, all these kids that are being separated from their families, because this is a systematic thing. This isn't just about me and my daughter. And I know that Kim has a daughter as well. You know, Toby and Kathleen might not have kids. But I know Kim Gordon has a kid. So just think about how you would feel if this was you. So further on in this video, you know, again, it's it's what these places look like and what they trigger. So that you see these girls, you know, around the sky. And he's, you know, talking about um, the refrain is the cutest angels kiss the biggest devils every day. So I don't want to hear no complaints. What this looks like, this setting right here, it looks like Voodoo Donut. It looks like Voodoo 2. It looks like the Voodoo Donut, the second Voodoo Donut to open up the one that's on the east side of Portland, the one that's near, near to um, where I live. And it's at nighttime. And he's all dressed in pink. This girl right here and reminds me of this girl that I knew in um, California named Kathy. And at one point she pulls up her shirt and she shows these, this under or these shorts that look like a cow print or something like that. There's the, um, I guess I need to, I should tell the story about, I don't know if I have told the whole story. I don't think I have. It just seems like a non-story to me, but I guess it's not um, about Woodsy setting me up to make it seem like I was sort of trying to seduce him or something. I don't know because I was wearing a t-shirt when I answered the door in the middle of the night and he pushed his way in before I could get dressed. So, um, I think this is, there she is with her cow shorts. So they call me a cow because probably because the dairy, the Masson, dairy industry masons that were behind me. 
um, you know, and then there's this girl that looks lonely, and I, you know, I have the sense of these girls being separated from each other or something, but, or one of these girls being separated from somebody that she cares about, and this guy is, um, wondering why, you know, he doesn't get more attention or something like that, I'm not sure. But, um, I think what the whole, I really think that the, a big part, point of this whole video was to show this atmosphere that looks like Voodoo Donut. It's not Voodoo Donut. I think it says at the end, Pink Elephant. And um, to show the hair and to show the separation. And, you know, there's the twins, but the, like opposite twins, right? Dark and light. 